the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers for an episode 43. We're going to jump right in. You were... Thanks for going to jump in. What is going on here? <laughs> I don't trying to just draw the can. But you can go ahead and close it. I can't see his face anymore. So Only we get to see his face. <laughs> you're currently in the shipyards of Kaltirian. Um, having a shopping extravaganza. That's right. <laughs> Everything. Buying things shopping, and shopping, shopping. shopping things and shipping things. <laughs> I'm looking for a local FedEx. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking for their Harbor Freight. I'm looking for my Amazon, my Amazon, uh, what is that called? Lockbox? <laughs> oh, those are Whole Foods. That's right. So, without further ado, you will follow uh, the barrister through uh, the bluffs. And she will take you far above onto the main street of the city. Far above the uh, hubbubbery down below of the lower city. The upper city is very different. From here you can see the sun setting in the west. You can see the beautiful pink and blue azure skies opening up before you. As clouds kind of hang lazily in the air from a rain perhaps and a few nights before. The city up here, whereas down below it is rough and tumble and made of hewn wood with hard, with hard rough edges and unfinished uh, refinery. The, up here it is made of rotted stone. Um, it is like an entirely different city. If they similar stock of folk, but certainly those who are less industrious and more um, inclined to other things. There are a great number of tall soaring towers and other types of buildings throughout here, um, up to and including uh, a number of surrounding walls that keep Kielterian above safe from the encroaching forest beyond. There are a number of uh, tall, soaring apartments, folk kind of trapping in the street, children, men, women, going about their business. Since the sun is setting, most business is being wrapped up. You pass by a local wine sink but do not pause long enough to um, catch its name. Following the barrister and Sammy and Wolfgang and Hrung Bigley and Cecilia Vander, all of you make your way to the Dupre Pavilion, a summer home uh, just on the edge of Kael Tyrion. It sits upon a low hill and has a surrounding acreage about it. And there's no one really here save for a footman, an aging footman, who will actually meet you toward the Iron Rock gates that kind of bars it uh, from outside of Kael Tyrion, keeps the people from Kael Tyrion from wandering in. But this is actually near a street that is well cobbled, um, and it terminates at kind of a cul-de-sac where you see the Dupre uh, Pavilion rest. And as you can imagine, it's a small fortified manse, uh, a dilapidated build, the... Apparently, the, um, the, 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 yard, the, the surrounding yards are kept well. They cl clearly have started, the, the people they have hired to kind of tend to the grass and take to the bushes um, are, begin, still, are still doing their work in earnest, perhaps for the arrival of the barrister. But uh, would it have been the baroness herself, the work would have already been done. You come inside what is almost kind of like a... Uh, What's the name of that Grey Gardens, that documentary about the Kennedy sisters, or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. The Little Eating? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You come into, like, one that almost kind of feel, but out from outside it looks like it's dilapidated. Inside it's this, it's the, the walls are stuccoed and have bearings of where water has leaked within. The floors creak beneath your footing, but it's very large ballroom as you kind of come inside of it with this large sweeping staircase that's stacked with broadsheets. Um, the place is 
really cold. They haven't quite haven't lit the fires, and even those who and the, the footman who keeps this place, uh, an aging man named Ernst. Um, I stab a little easy. <laughs> Did you do, you, do you stop in the library? <laughs> yeah, with a candle. That's right. He he speaks to the barrister and introduces himself, and she introduces herself as well and says, you know, these people will stay be staying with us here. They are honored guests. They will be allowed to come in and out as they please, day or night. And he simply says, do they have horses? And she says, no. And from there, you will find, she will, the, 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 aging, the aging footman, we have one. You say, you say one horse. horse. That's right. They'll, they'll stable it. Yeah, okay. But you said horses. <laughs> That's plural. Oh. So, uh, got hers, I'm sure. They will, um, horse. they will see to your horses, and, and the aging footman, Ernst, will take you to your rooms on the second floor that overlooks the fields down below. It's certainly the fanciest place you've ever stayed in, but it's under yeah. ill repair. There's cracks in the stucco and the ceilings and on the walls. The doors are are heavy enough, but they do not lock. The brass has not been polished. The beds, iron rot as they are, are creaky and kind of the springs out of them kind of bounce and squeak a bit. Um, you are you are actually kept uh, not within the guest quarters, the, the lower guest quarters and below the house, like mm-hmm. right. But in the guest quarters above, which would speak to a higher station, so you're not simply treated as people who would be who would be befitting to sleep down in the cellars with the rest of the help. You're actually given a second floor guest room that's shared between all of you, likely for the <coughs> attendants who are well born and bred that are uh, not low born but still deserving of a common room. No privacy in here among all of you. The room is simply it is large enough to keep all of you. Inside you go. But it's just the six of us, right? Yes. So you were here. Seven. I'm guessing your wife's. Madam Barrister shall see you for dinner, Ernst says. At least we only take one room. Alright, thank you very much, sir. Shall I fetch you some water or something to Something light to snack on, he says. Both of us would be uh, wonderful. Warm milk, too? Ah, yes. Water just for me. As he dodders away, you kind of imagine this old man in the middle of the night uh, wearing a nightgown with a cap and holding a, a single a single uh, candle and a lamp, like wandering down these halls, seeing to the many people who would be able to be kept within the Dupre Pavilion, but uh, it is only you all within here, so you'll have his undivided attention, or as best the attention that he can possibly give you, um, <laughs> being as aged as he is. But the place seems somber. The door, <clears throat> clunk. Comes to a shed as he brings you something to eat, some bread, some cheese, some warm milk, some water. Mm, you, you. you take to washing yourselves, at least in the water basin. There are private, uh, there's a shared and a private restroom here. Uh, water closets, I should say. Ooh, I can see. Uh, I reckon I, I said I was going to say what uh, became old Wolfgang the other night, but uh, you know. Man's got to have his own privacy. It, it, I, I, I will assure you, the uh, disease in question is, uh, contagious. Not, is, is not contagious, oh, good. nor is it of a dire nature, and he will be seeing to it presently now that he's in the city. I won't go on any further detail of his request. All right. Not good news, though. Well, that's a strange disease. Hey. His business. All right. I mean, so you can't cut back not... the layers of that. So it wasn't Grace game. And he ain't gonna die. Grace. I told you. Not contagious. Not dire. Take care of it. All I care about. And he wants his privacy maintained. <laughs> he has a gentleman's disease. <laughs> 
I assured him. Uh, I assured him I wasn't gonna breathe a word of what it was. You, you bring up a good point. I think you might be correct. <laughs> I will leave that alone. Uh, you best. <laughs> Sometimes the best things happen to the best people. Yes, I was thinking that. What's that? It couldn't have happened to a better person. What's that, Brothel in, in Hastings? Mm. I reckon it's Brothel. Uh, I'm rather distracted. Uh, I mean, it, I'm sure you can find someone Brothel will know of. I mean, if his sister is so well high married, I imagine he might even have a missus. Did you even ask him? No. I mean, again, it's a gentleman's disease. Let's right. Just drop it. AKA, not our business. Yes. Let's just yeah. keep the man's business to himself. That's all I say. He didn't keep his business to himself. <laughs> so crass. He's young as. <laughs> well, she is a bit of a girl, you know. She's young. Yes. Quite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At least you're making me. You made just making me talk like all the talk. There is a parlor you can sit in and talk. Actually, <laughs> maybe we continue with what we need and leave him to see his own needs. Eh? You know, there was once a great Aglodorian host where seventy percent of their soldiers were certainly more killed by. Gentleman's disease than by sword and bow and axe. Really? I, I, said, do. I said nothing about a no gentleman's women. disease. Tittering aside. I reckon <laughs> he's killed. <laughs> you will gain two corruption for that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't think I've ever heard of this branch of history, though. Oh, mm. uh, yeah, those, uh, it is spoken of in other tones, but uh, it is uh, unquestionable that is what uh, befell them. More than uh, were laid to earth on the battlefield, in fact. Mm -hmm. I would say anyone who's been trained in any sort of warfare would know that's very much true. Disease is the most killer of an army than uh, sometimes swords, or spears, or bows. Let's 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 drop the subject. All right. Well, it really uh, doesn't set right to me. <laughs> uh, I was talking about warfare. Well, uh, I think I shall uh, mm -hmm. look through this book some more. I found some interesting things in it last oh. night. Yes. Well, that's good. Any, anything that would be interesting to a person like me? Uh, looking at the culture, and it, it does appear that said fire was not at the cauldron yet on the deck. Well, I mean... Like, normally you wouldn't want the fire in the cauldron. You want the fire heating up the cauldron. But the mechanism, um, the, the, you would think if there was some kind of explosion, some kind of fire or whatever, it would have happened at the source, but it didn't. Well, I thought we talked uh, about earlier where heat rises, so wouldn't the fire go up? Not necessarily. Well, there's been... We've got a deck between. It should have cut, eaten through said deck, don't you think? I don't know. Well, there's been uh, some buildings that are heated by a stove. Yes. And uh, if you don't have the point where the stove leads to the outside done right, I, mean, I don't know what it is. It could cause soup, soot or fire. Yeah, yeah, it could cause a fire. Not where the fire is, but where the fire's going. Yes. But Shielding is what that's called. Or sealing, yes, but. I, I don't know. I think I figured out right. somewhat how the cauldron could be. Started. I, I don't know that it's really useful information, but it's, it's interesting. Certainly. <coughs> but uh, I do believe that if I am able to go through the code decks, I might find more information in this particular. I don't know what that was. Uh... That was Sirenscape. Thank you, Sirenscape. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find the right. I... I do believe we're haunted. Has anyone seen anything? <laughs> I pulled my gun. What is going around. on here? <laughs> Where are they? So the 
mechanism didn't fail? No. The ventilation? Um, possibly. It, it serves to a reason that I might need some more information before I make that conjecture. Makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. The next thing <clears> I know I've looked over these books with you, but I just can't seem to mm. can't seem to break the same walls. Oh, well. The... well, Tarwin, we 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 made it here. Mm -hmm. I reckon it's time to reckon order and figure out what's going on and set the task. Reckon order of bath. Or... Come hey y'all! You're standing on the other side of the door. Come in. What y'all doing? <coughs> he comes in. Having some refreshments. Who's join us? The cleanest you've ever seen this man his entire life. Come on, come on, just join us. Bathe just... his hair, red hair, kind of greased back with water. His beard, nice and fresh. His clothes, still a little dirty, but. We're Cut just... the out of one of the armoires. It's a bit dusty, but. It fits. Yeah. Mind if I pull up a chair? No, join us for some refreshments. We're just nice if you didn't. Good. The, uh, the baths, they downstairs. It's out to the old man. He'll heat the, he'll heat the water up in the walls. Well, oh. A plumb system. Nice. That, Why yeah. Why would you put plums in the wall? It's plumb it's crazy. Not that plumb. is plumb crazy. Oh, God. Uh... Piping. Piping. Oh, oh, all right. With like the stove and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. Same. Similar. Yes. Thank you. The future arrives. The future arrives. So right but metaphorically and really. And then again now. My line. <laughs> I left him with the ships, with the, with the quartermaster down below. The charge are a pretty steep penny. It's a good damn thing that we're turning this thing over. We need to... Uh, do we need to take it to the actual Baron's castle? Estate. How do you reckon you get it up there? He laughs. I, Sammy, that's not my deal. Damn near took me three months to build that crane level four. No, we just leave it down. On the, we leave it down there. I got the ship's deed. Well, Wolfgang's got it, I should say. I figure when all this business is done and Baron who's he wants it gets all sorted out. Well. We'll give the deed to him. How was your master? <laughs> He's in the city seeing to uh that illness sickness. Mm. Oh, everyone needs a physician. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, everyone needs a helping hand from time to time. I didn't have the equipment <laughs> to, to see to him. We trust our physician. I understand that some people think he's less than qualified, but who works on me. Alright. His treatment's during the reek helped me out quite a bit. Well, no. <laughs> no offense intended, but if I got an ear hanging halfway off my head, I'm not going to trust you to sew it back on. So, girl, Stetter? I would. Well, that's your own that's your own situation, but if you're out in the field, sometimes you don't have a choice with me. Well, it's a good damn thing we're not in the field. <laughs> <laughs> so... Secretly toward all of you. Well, you're here now. What are you gonna do? Yeah, your job's done, right? That's a good question. I figure I'll head back with Wolfgang to Durendal. We gotta get her back after all. Business ain't done here. So you're gonna stick around for the party? <laughs> I don't think I'd be going anywhere near that party. I didn't say go to I just said sticking around. You should. I mean, the defense agency is accepting new recruits <laughs> day by day. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to impose, and to be fair, I, Do I overheard a little bit of what you were talking with the lady about, and I don't, that ain't quite my business. Do you, got a, do you have a cloak? And a dagger? I look like a man who has enough silver to buy a cloak. <laughs> no, no, no. I got a raincoat. Hey. That's about as good as I got. One serves more purpose than the other. Well, nah, I don't think I would join you. You got a interesting time, I suppose, ahead of you. But we'll certainly see each other again before we leave Kale Tyrion. 
So, um, what's your... Have you been here before? Phil Tieran? Sometime back, about five years ago, right after the Dupre stronghold was burnt. Sorry, but Emory stronghold, he says. Ah. Where would you suggest we have a nightcap tonight? Well, if you want to find anything in the city, <coughs> you stay down below. But that sun sets, and I can let you through the gate, so you'll be stuck down below. So take that for what you will. Well, can, once the sun sets, you can't get to the lower city. Can't get to the upper city. That's right. The Alorites keep it all locked up tight. But we're in the upper city. Fucking Right, but the good drinking places are down below. I, I got that. What seems to be they're just cutting me off at the feet is what I'm trying to suggest here. Well, just have you not capped during the day. Well, it ain't a nightcap then. There are certainly places around here to get you drink, but not quite the type I like to rub shoulders with. Besides, they give me the long glance, being a Grolsteader and all. Not talking fancy like they do, them Romanian Arab, them Romanian nobles. I know the type. Yeah, I know the type too. He looks to Harper. <laughs> I know the type three. I'm just joshing you. <laughs> hey, I know an aristocratic person. I'm just a normal yeah, you, like to, you, like, you like to pretend, don't you? That's exactly what a spy would say. That's exactly <laughs> what an aristocracy would say. <laughs> hey, just, I mean, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. It was, it was brass. Yeah, it'll be fair. Your brother was born with a silver sword in his hand. Right. So. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, very much up. So. No, I'm just saying I don't know much about the upper city. It's kind of on you all. Uh, Between you and me, uh, I'm trying to talk Wolfgang to go down to the lower city with me and stay down there, but, I mean... If there's anybody who's going to attend to his uh, sickness, it's going to be selling up here. <laughs> so I guess, uh, you know, stay here and live in the high life. As he looks around, are they dilapidated, leaking mansion? <laughs> live in the high life and uh, taking for what I can. They got a whole water downstairs full of food. Why would a man need to go anywhere else? Or a woman, for that matter. You get a drink. A drink? We've been on a sh- on the ship, we almost got killed by painted giants. That old man said he's bringing in jugs. Jugs. Warm off the teat. Warm off the teat. Goat milk. Well, I do. Uh, don't curl your nose. I just had some milk. It was fine. I'm not curling my nose. I'm curling my nose because I'd rather have wine at this point after the. I'm sure they'll have wine at this so such dinner. I mean. <sighs> Watch two this fancy now. bears of Rosalia Mansfield, you know she's something special anyhow. She ain't gonna have no dinner without no wine. Uh, Y'all been through hell and back. I mean, who wouldn't celebrate the little bit of bubbly or whatever? Bubbly? Now you've sparked my interest. No, <laughs> well, ain't don't you mean bubbly here. I'm just joshing you. Why don't you show me where this larder is and maybe I can stumble into the wine. <laughs> <laughs> There's no wine down there. Well, all right. <laughs> you hear Ernst as he can have daughters in. Dinner is served, he says. Well, I guess it's time. <laughs> the music's right on cue. <laughs> you come down into the dining area, and the table has has certainly been set, to some degree, <laughs> uh, by, uh, by the footman. And there is a, a, a long table with a white table, terry cloth, tablecloth put up on it with little doilies. Uh, it's, it appears to be stained in places. There's these candelabras resting up on it. Um, the outside world kind of uh, disappears behind the darkness beyond the windows. And you're all kind of in solitude in this, uh, in this uh, dining room as Ernst brings in the food and you're sitting on creaky old wooden chairs and the pocket doors to the room is closed and you begin to eat and you're using forks and knives made of silver on porcelain plates and it feels very, very strange to those who are not born of the aristocracy. You're like, wait, did I do this with the thing? But I, I use a fork and the, you don't use the fork and the knife in the same hand? You use it in two different hands? Ernst will drop napkins in your lap and it all feels very strange, at least for those who are not 
uh, who are not of the social class of arist- aristocrat. I'll tap my glass every time Ernst comes around. Yeah. I would be remiss if I did not pour your wine myself. <coughs> no, no, no. She takes the bottle from um from Ernst. To look at, I was Old man, please, just as a token of my Well of my frustration, I suppose, earlier, she says. She pours the wine. I am sorry, <coughs> truly, she says. Master Master does it's it's it's, it's, it's all fine. Right. It's all fine. We are, we We all were a little frustrated after we almost got ate by giants that were painted in blue woe and uh the male was drowned on the ship slash <laughs> flying boat. She can't help but laugh. Yeah. Uh, was was taxing on all of us. But the wine tastes Wonderful. For what it is worth, I am sorry. There is a, a weight, I suppose, that is, that I suppose I did not feel on my shoulders until we were near Kaltirian. And it all came crashing down. Well, you forgive in my eyes. I took no offense. No need to give forgiveness. Good. I did take offense, but you all forgive me. I forgive you. What, what if you. Um, Master Wolfgang is? Would he be joining us, or is he still under the weather? Master Wolf. Oh, yes, uh, Wolfgang. She calls it by his first name. Will be staying in the city. Ah. You eat. You make some small talk. So, she says to the matter at hand. Have any of you been to Kale Tyrion before? I have not. No, my lady. And you, Master Bandit? I, uh, I, I hope you don't mind my joining your, uh, your table. I feel like everything's sort of, uh, above the board. Uh, you are a guest, I do pray. Thank you. Um, yes, as a matter of fact, I have been to the city. It has been a number of years. I was a very young man. Oh, tell me, where did you stay? Oh, we stayed in, uh, boy. I certainly remember the, uh, the courtyards were stone and the trees were sparse, for I couldn't have been more than, I don't know, six or seven winters, likely. Oh, you were quite young then. I am sorry, I... Just took your age. I'm older than six or seven now. <laughs> you see, you you suspect that the barrister is probably in her mid twenties. <clears throat> well, she continues her story. I spent a number of years here studying law in preparation. I suppose you could say. Uh, beneath the tutelage of your lore knights here in the city. That's where I spent most of my days. I was not raised in forming school or anything of that sort. I was born plain and low, I guess. But um, the Baroness saw something in me, I suppose, and I was sent here and has spent my life in study and service to her. So you have contacts in the city. Indeed, she says. More specifically, uh, the Baroness and the Dupre have many contacts throughout the city. In fact, Baron de Bernard Dupre, her namesake, her father, was born here. And she's cutting her food. And she puts the knife, she switches the knife and fork in the same hand every time she eats. She doesn't eat with two hands like this. She's clearly Romanian. You can tell, like, she's burger. I think you know it already. It's by, by judging by her affectations. <laughs> Although she puts on airs. <clears throat> he was born here, <clears throat> as uh, was the Baroness. Uh, they spent some time um, in Hastings. Hastings was once a holding of the Dupre, uh, some gener- some number of years until the, uh, the business with the gym, you know, she says. But here yeah. we are. Hastings used to have walls, right? What's that? I'm sorry. 
That was an inside joke. Or... <laughs> the Hastings used to have Walmart. I think it used to, yeah. It did. <laughs> they, got, they got destroyed by the Genevieve. Oh, I mean, uh, yes. So, uh, Baron Bernard Dupre was my first sponsor, and then when he passed on, uh, the Baroness had taken to me and my family. We were discussing about Clayton Arcade and the lesser and what we should do. Yes, indeed. I, I think uh, the boss is. You and Elisa came up with a plan, but it's, it's pretty strict. It's, it's simple. As Warren has suggested, we don't really know. We don't know the layout of the castle. We don't know the people involved. We don't really know anything. But is there a way that we can get an audience for them to discuss what you have learned? That's a good question. Let me tell you what I have learned since coming to the city. We've only been here but a few short hours. Uh, I've, a few folk have come to visit me. I have requested the guest list for the masquerade. I have confirmed it is indeed a masquerade where, as you well know, um, the people who were born better than us can make jackanapes of one another behind masks. Uh, a virtual, a, a coterie of <coughs> Blue Bloods and others, and their attendants will certainly be there. <clears throat> and perhaps, you know, these masquerades, if you know anything about those at the Upper Cross, this is an opportunity for them to uh, sow their oats. This party is very exclusive. Uh, I am not, I am not uh, entirely sure that we'll get the entire guest list. Uh, furthermore, um, I strongly suspect that Baron Clayton R.K., uh, will be in, will be indisposed in preparation. Uh, seeking eyes in them may be difficult. <clears throat> I was hoping to make introductions while we were at the masquerade, at least to you, to him. However, I'm even questioning that now after our after some thought. So, are we going as guests or as servants? That is an excellent question. <clears throat> I don't know. This is not my area of specialty. The, 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 the areas of subterfuge in this fashion and who you are presented as, it is not, it is not my area of expertise. Well, my understanding is that Dufresne operate in all manner of fields, and in particular the Dufresne's uh, mission, I suppose you could say, is they figure things out. Yep. So in order to do that, we need some questions to answer. Certainly, of course. So, I'm all ears. <clears throat> she takes another long drink of the wine. We've got some questions, and then uh, maybe you've answers, maybe you don't. But if you can answer at least one, we'll be a little bit further along than we were before. So, mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned they wear these masks as japes. Jokes. What are they, what are they making jokes at? Well, uh, Master Vander. Mm. As I understand that you are gentle born, perhaps you can illuminate us. Because, well, in, in, see, <clears throat> if, I, if they normally wear these masks to make jokes of, like, you know, important political figures, and I go as, like, say, you know, uh, uh, a chimney sweep, you know, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be very, you know, uh, I'd stick out like a sore thumb, right? So, so what are they making japes at? Think, boss, you want to stick out like a sore thumb? Or if I open my mouth. True. So this is actually quite an interesting story. <laughs> I he begins. <laughs> so this actually this this practice goes back for at least a few hundred years, where when court would be made that they would uh, put on a painted smile in order to do political business. The idea that someone, well, I'm sure you've heard the expression of uh, pat you on the back while preparing the knife. Consider it to be sort of the, uh, the origins of this practice. These dramatic masks that I use the word jape to describe have a painted on permanent fixture, a mockery of a smile. So they ain't dressing up like anything in particular. 
and dressing up simply as themselves. A little payload, I guess, most of the time, but the, the smile represents uh, the masks that we all wear in order to do business. So it's not like they're hiding from the poison cradle or something, it's just what they do? No, they're hiding. They're hiding their faces behind masks. Those masks will have a permanent smile. So you can't tell what the person is actually expressing. That is the jake. They can be smiling with you or smiling against you. Well, that doesn't sound very quiet to me. It's <laughs> very much my class. It's a little dry. I'll give you. I don't so like they put on masks. That'll be the only thing dry about the proceedings, I can assure you of that. So they put on the masks, ask like a bunch of fools, but since they're wearing masks, no one can hold them to it. Is that the, that the idea? Well, no, they won't be holding the masks in front of their face for the whole time, but it is representing of the idea that they're, pre- that they're presenting when they are on the dance floor. They will wear, hold the masks in front of their, uh, their faces like as a joke, but as you said... It's enough to make the uh, the proceedings a little confusing, particularly if you're trying to take account of a large group of them. And they all kind of look the same. Okay. There, there's the point. We will not know who is who. We will not know. Well, I have some interesting news to share about that. Unless there's favors. I assume my host would probably have a different mask at least for the time. <coughs> I strongly suspect that Ben, Clayton, or R.K. shall be dressed as others. He is a baron in name, but but in name only. He's a lord more so. I suppose they call him baron because he is the highest ranking noble here. But it is not the nobles who rule Kael Tyrion. That much is for certain. Then who does? The Allure Knights. Kale Tyrion is where they are trained. So, the great library once stood here, in fact. So the Alonites run the place. And... Uh, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. It depends on what you mean by run. Control. Control, it. yeah. I mean, it's not like they, they do the day-to-day day business or nothing, no. But. Does the lion concern <coughs> himself with ants? Yeah, we're saying the same thing. Yeah. So. The lion might if it steps on an anthill. So. <laughs> I was going somewhere with this. <laughs> it's okay. There is an aristocracy, a. a. loose <coughs> aristocracy that stands here and kill to in remnants. I suppose, of the Bastard King's court and other hanger-ons and sycophants who have come to take his place and others as those seats have been vacated. Kael Tyrion's politics is, to, to, to put it lightly, is rather, uh, it is mostly much like the masks, is a, is a, a fixture and nothing more. It means little beyond these walls. However, Kael Tyrion plays a very important position on the river. <coughs> so, who would stand the benefit from Clayton's death? That is a good question. Well, see, if the, the lower knights... The, well, no, let us not speculate until we until we have debriefed completely. Ah. So, so remember... Let us talk what, about the importance of Kael Tyrion first. What the lower knights do, they are the civil servants. If you want to think about it that way, they all the ones that run the city, the taxes, the collections, well, the education. It is your opinion, I suppose. It's not my opinion, is it not? The way of the entire kingdom. It is a rather fractured way to look at it. And maybe I'm wrong. I mean, it seems rather obvious to me. I'm not a... <coughs> I'm no expert in politics or civil affairs by any stretch of the imagination. There are ones who know far more than I do, certainly, but if you have a baron that is going to make a 
political alliance with a very grand gift and a very grand <coughs> place with someone who uh, is garnering uh, political allegiances in order to defect and that person winds up dead. Well, that seems like that would be disincentive for anyone else to do so. Right. Indeed. To tell the truth that Kael Tyrion, although it's its family lines here are mean little in the grand scheme of things. One thing that Lord Clayton Hawke has is the lower city. He receives the benefits of the taxes. He also controls the wharfmaster as well as the river wardens. Should the river wardens draw the dams, because remember the axe water passes through but through one city. Should they draw the dams up, no ships may go north to Old Lork to make its way into the west. No ships may go south to Rowaline unless they go by land. And that is a precarious situation, particularly for communities who rely on river travel. <clears throat> Kill Tyrion, uh, to, 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 to say that Kill Tyrion is not a strategic stronghold would be vastly understating its importance. Vasily King understood this. The Baroness understands this, and should she be able to <coughs> seal the agreement with Clayton Arkay, then it's a foregone conclusion that should she need to draw, play that card at any point, she could. But it is enough merely to have some uh, to, to have your enemy know that you can draw that card, but that is that you're ready to at least warn them away from making foolish decisions. So, the Lord becomes a true Baron. He is up jumped. Made Baron of Kale Tyrion. Should this come to be? Clayton, Lord Clayton has already made agreements with the Baroness, but I am here to ensure that his seal is firmly applied to the documents, she says. An affirmation <clears throat> of support that can be taken before the ministry. Curiosity, knowing the particular political stances and such in this place. The man that is a lord now self proclaimed somewhat as a baron is the one we're going after, not the Alornites. Why would you go after the Alornites? They are teachers and scholars. But they run this place. No, they don't. As I said, it's a very fractured way to look at our order. I, I don't understand the gravity of such a gift to a person that's not even quite the Baron. That's a, a <coughs> I think it comes down to what she just said. The, the whole reason the Bastard King was able to foment or create his kingdom is because of Galtirian. That's you correct. Can, you control the river, you control the trade. Essentially, you can it, starve right. half the kingdom. The Bastard King essentially had a hand around the throat of Aglador, which is why Cassandra Malister never actually tried to take the city back, right? Because he knew if he did so, he'd basically be choking himself off, which would likely lead to more ruin than prosperity. I guess the uh, Baroness is thinking the same thing. If she can control this, then, well, that also helps keep the east a bit safe as well, so I, I, from a strategic point, the city is very important, and if this man is the one that controls the river, then he controls the city. I think there may be some misassumptions of what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is could there be that there is some animosity possibly towards the Baron, considering he is not necessarily the only one that has some kind of power in this place? Certainly. I think it would be unwise to ignore the fact that there are social circles with a very small place that are fairly parochial uh, those who may not necessarily agree with the cessation it is not to say that his enemies if you would truly call them enemies know of this but the Baroness does have those who would stand against her even in Durindal so is, is this really a secret 
interesting you should mention that because from words of travelers to the west of Durindal, Grawl Setters, um, I feel that this is probably made it at least to Old Lord at this point. It is only a matter of time until it spreads further west. Hmm. That's, mm-hmm. my, that's, that's my fears. It's strike what Aaron's hot at this point. That's why she's moved so quickly, <coughs> right? Indeed. It is why we were so rushed as we were to gather the following morning to strike out. Commander Tenenfelder is in the city here. He is here. I'm glad he was able to make it. Did he run into any problems? I have not yet to make contact with him, but we will certainly see. If we don't speak to him between then and now, we will certainly see him in the mass voting. Well, we still have all of tomorrow before the mass parade, right? Is there there are many preparations I have to make personally right. for that. I will have no time to attend to that. Right. Is there any way for us to see the hall where this is going to be attended at? Is there any way for us to... Uh, honestly, to protect somebody, you have to know <laughs> know I, the layout. To, uh, trust me, I, mean, I, I agree. Only in your words. Know that this masquerade is taking place on the winter solstice. This has been months in preparation. The Baron will will do nothing to interrupt the flow of service. The pomp and circumstance and the rituals that the noblery observe, uh, he will he he will make he will make no decision that would potentially jeopardize that. I do not feel that it's an option. I'm sorry. No, no, it's not the best of answers. No, 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 just trying to... If there happens to be preparations being made, there are people making such preparations. That's who we want to talk to. That's what I was trying to get to. There's also a question I had. Um, State, you know that this assassination is at least to be attempted, or there's been news of it. Who gave you this information? Sorry, it's it's autumn solstice, not winter solstice. Oh, gosh, what's wrong with me? The solstice equinox. mid when it's a mid autumn equinox. Equinox. equinox was the equinox. equinox. There's two equinox, spring yeah. and yeah, well, fall equinox. So this is the end of fall. Summer. Summer, winter. And winter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is the end equinox. of autumn. Equinox. This, this would be winter. equinox. Right. So equinox autumn would be equinox. mid autumn, right? Yeah. It's the yeah. mid autumn. It's the it's right. point of autumn. Uh, there's not really an end of autumn. Yeah. Har- that's usually yeah. harvest festival. So uh, it, yes. So as I was saying, yes. So that that being said. To prepare for the mid-autumn celebration, I strongly, I do not feel that it's probably an option. Certainly seek it out if you wish, but you have, you must prepare as well. Is there a quartermaster? Is there a, um, Surely. So, so, someone of uh, burger status, someone that I can, uh, you know, not to say it this Cut way. his purse? <laughs> Your words, I'm sorry. Is there somebody you wish to manipulate, I guess is what you're asking. I was going to say put my thumb on, since I do have class above him and you. <clears throat> Please, not... You will find, Please. my western friend, you will find that your blood means nothing here. You are not Rovanian. They will not care whether you are an aristocrat or the king himself. <clears throat> the people here are incredibly parochial and small. The, the, the autumn court, I suppose, is very small. Well, I guess Jonathan is our only path, then. Hmm? He looks so. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he holds there. station above you and me, and he will most likely hold station above a simple quartermaster. All men hold station above me. Master Patrick. Uh, I would not suggest that. It is true. I am, after all, uh, working in a man's field. The Dutch. No, but the truth of the matter is this. The truth of the matter is in Kael Tyrion, they will not care whether you were born from the west or you were born well in the east. The courts here are very parochial. It's very, the city may look large, but the, the place is very small. To be truthful, I do not know enough of the Baron or his court. I know specifically what screws to turn should it come to that to ensure that the Baron affixes his seal to the documents. However... Until I get this guest list, I can't even begin to speculate as to who will be attending, much less his right hand person. But a quartermaster, he will certainly have, that is for sure. For in, true. In, in order for you to make sure he puts a seal on it, he's got to live through it. So I'm a bit interested in what Elisa asked earlier. That was, how did you come by this uh, assassination information? Yeah. 
Well, she says, the Baroness maintains a network of informants. This is certainly inherited from her time spent with the Genevieve. I believe we spoke before about Madeline Dupre's status before she was before she became a baronet. Obviously. I understand she has a network. No, no. She was a prisoner of war. That's correct. Yes. The Genevieve have a deep abiding dislike for the Baroness. The divorce has certainly not done anything to cessate this. Look at the Salt Peterman and what they were doing in the streets of Durindal beneath the Baroness's nose. They are thumbing the nose at her. Coming to arms, coming to violence in the streets, unheard of, against you all, in fact. So consider this, that <clears throat> although the, the circles here are small, uh, she has had to do as she must do to survive. The network of informants would not be unrealistic, it is why we've been able to uh, get such information, and not without price, certainly. I simply state, who told you? I, I, I understand that she has some kind of network. I am not at the... Uh, I cannot tell you who, but I can tell you what information was given to me. Uh, a directional source of some sort, just so that we might know where this particular threat might be coming from, is all I'm asking. I, that I can answer. All right, then. So, our informants have informed us uh, that... The assassin will be wearing blue. Does that state told something? Some kind of. Group? Of course it does. Anyone who is at the party will be able to recognize this item of blue, whatever, whatever it may be, and they will know that they are the assassin, those who would stand against the Baron. It is, it'll be a tell of sort, I suppose. What that item is, we do not know. Whether it's a sash, a banner, a mask, a glove, a pair of pants, a feather. How common, and since it's parochial and I seem not to know of my own station or class in this backwoods, whatever place we're at again, how common is blue? Very uncommon. Very uncommon? Very uncommon, uh, yes. Indigo dye is Expensive. No. Not uh, from these lands, that's for sure. I know of one uh, out. No house colors. I know of one no house color. color. Uh, yes. It's white and blue. Genevieve. Uh huh. Well. It's the only one that I could think of also. But... It's not to say that the Genevieve are. For some reason, I know all of the crest. It is, it is, it is not to say that the Genevieve are behind this, but were one to create the. The, um, I don't know what you would call it. I'm drawing a blank. Facade. The facade that the Genevieve were behind it. Blue would certainly be the color that they would <laughs> wear. Right. So. But uh, it will so. be a physical tell to others who know who the assassin is. Could this not be a ruse in itself? Right. How sure are your sources. Form, your, yeah, your sources? This sources have never let us wrong. It is what brought us here in the first place. So here, here comes the juxtaposition we've been put in at this point, correct? So obviously there are people that will be looking for said assassin, that will be looking for someone who's wearing blue. Yes. Correct. Correct. They are, whether they are from the Genevieve or whether they are trying to pin things on the Genevieve, that is obviously the, the connotation they are trying to push. And the only information we have is look for someone in blue. And if that information is incorrect, then Rest we have tried our best and we have no fault at this point. Just buy a whole bunch of manacles and put them all in manacles and say, wherever they fit. You are a deep cynic, milady. You had no information before who the assassin was, and now you have something. My information, my source, the sources of the Baroness will not be wrong on this. I am not stating your sources are incorrect. I am stating we can do what we can do. Of and course. That is it. The Baroness has full faith uh, in your abilities. So you, you are Dufresne, after all. You are no run-of-the-mill cell swords. You are problem solvers. As we are reminded. 
you swore an oath to Dufresne, you should be writing this book by your oath alone. I should not have to tell you this. I do not need to be reminded of things I have signed. It is not your signature. It is the oath you swore to the Dufresne, milady. Dufresne, again. not Dupre. I have formulated a plan. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. I have a plan. We know that uh, this uh, skullduggery is set to take place at the Masquerade Ball. We will go to the Baron, and we will tell him not to go to the party. Well, bravo, bravo! I am sure your plan will work perfectly. You and being then, of such a high standard. And then one of us dresses work. up as the Baron and goes in his place. We just make sure not to die. Actually, that's. It's not going to work. Never. No man will hide from his own party. No man would let someone else take credit for his own party. Have some of that rank. Could be wrong. Well, again, as she has pointed out, I'm, I'm not, <coughs> not of your. Consider it, a, consider it a starting point. So what do the servants do? It, it, it makes sense in all accounts. If someone were to come to me and say, hey, they intend to do that, and all you have to do is not to get drunk and rub noses, I would say, yes, then I will not do these things. I would agree, but... So what, <coughs> what do servants do with these things? They so, serve drinks, food, right, so they, clean they, up. They carry around. Sometimes get pushed of... into the broom, broom closet or not. <laughs> they carry around <laughs> mugs of ale and. So well, usually wine. I think I it's mostly going to be wine. So they, they have pewter jacks of wine? Yes. They're holding? Pitchers. Yes. Mostly Perhaps. probably silver. That's what I'm getting at. You see, I don't know these things. So typically, wine <laughs> is served out of a carafe or pitcher. Yes. I don't know either, because as I've been told, things are done there. but I don't know. Yeah. But I'm going to say this: the wealthier, Serv- the wealthier, service, places. servants are going to be serving, and the men are going to be trying to get on the pretty servants, because this is how it's done in our class. <laughs> That is what she means by they will be. You see, the closest thing I know. Defacing themselves. Debauchery, whatever you want to call it. The closest thing I know of this is the one time I got my hands on one of the adventurous exploits of Lyndon Genevieve the Younger, Man of the People. Um, (laughs) When when he was talking about one of these. uh, Parties. Sorries? Soirees. Soirees. And, uh, yes. I can read, I just, you know, don't know uh, all these words. Uh, <laughs> so, that's a test. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. he was talking about one of these soirees, and, like, uh, uh, you know, he was going into detail about how they was carrying these trays with handles and putting them down, and, and just like, so I need to make sure that if I'm going to this, and I'm obviously not going to be a noble. I need to know what to do with these drinks and food. Speak to Ernst. I'm certain he can bring you up to speed on Excellent. the duties of a servant. Right. <coughs> Usually it is a most pedestrian sort, carrying carafes of wine, as the lady has said. Okay. Would uh, this be a fourth feast, or is this just simply a masquerade of canapes? Oh, it shall be a masquerade of the age. They will spare no expense. Will there be a sit-down portion, I'm really asking? Or would this be more of a, a, a walking party? No, the Ravanians will not sit to eat. They will stand and eat like they seem to be. the people they are. I did not but know. as they are a Dane swore, and they'd certainly sit down with their silver platters and spoons and whatever else and go through the I rituals see. of the West. But here in the East, they would dare not do so. It would be mostly finger foods. Well, Snack trays. As it is a masquerade. Food stations. It's catering. As it is a masquerade. We're talking about catering. It's like the garment. As it is a masquerade, sometimes we mm-hmm. like to pretend we're things that we know aren't. So I was making sure this was not going to be of a different sort. The fabulous thing I feel about this masquerade, should you be of the West and ignorant of the ways of the Ravanians, or should you be Ravanian and not born high enough to understand, as I am, 
the way these things work. What I have learned being, in, oh, I was born very low. But, born, but under, one thing I have understood and learned in the Baroness's court is this. There is as much knavery and conniving in the Eastern courts as there is the Western courts. And despite the fact they may be a very different people, uh, they, they, they will certainly make asses of themselves and they will act as they will. In fact, I would not be surprised to find people there who will not, who will not announce their names at all. They shall hide behind their masks and the entire time. Exactly. So, should one enter the masquerade with a mask on and act who as you all are, I don't feel that would make you stand out. In fact, you may better fit in. Wait, so... But when you are put to task, if a conversation is to happen, that is when the true test begins. So, they would outwardly act maybe like a lowborn like myself. I will not be surprised to find the mockery of Aridane faces upon their masks. Quite a bit. So I could get in wearing a mask, it's just that if somebody actually wanted to do business, then... <laughs> All of us should wear masks. End of story. Everyone should. Alright. So yeah, that should be something to procure. There are me certain other means of ingress. If you wish to go in as servants, I can certainly arrange for that, but we'll have to make a decision on this quick, at least tonight, before the morning. I'll wear a mask. <clears throat> if someone thinks they could not pass themselves off as... Romanian, possibly higher born. Or would it be better for them to appear as a servant? I would think. Having attended some of these meetings, I have heard of all manner of terrible accents. Carlstead accent, Aradane accent, Folkish accent. It is all part of the of the the, the wokery. Yes. Well, then, if someone is worried, they might say the wrong thing. I think what she's oh. saying is saying the wrong thing might get you uh, further. <laughs> well, that's not the wrong thing. Uh, well, I think it's better if I wear a mask. Probably shouldn't say you're a kingsman. I don't know, they might mock that too. That's all the information I can tell you. That's the only thing I have learned so far. Tomorrow I shall be taxed immensely. But you have the run of the home, the pavilion, and the city if you wish. I have told Ernst to ferry you wherever you need to go by coach. Oh. Coach. Indeed. Ernst comes from a very long line of servants. He is a hail. He will he will do whatever you need of him. Within his what facilities he has, he's very open. Well, what say you, everyone else? I think if you help me with uh, what to put on the mask and some other things, I think we'll be alright. Well, sounds like the details we can work out later, Sandy yeah. says. Yeah. <laughs> we all will go to this damn thing. And from there, we will stop for the night. It's going to be 100 reward points, everybody. Oh. Yay. Yay. And any corruption tonight? Yeah, there yes. was some. Two. Two. Oh. So we yeah, got a corruption. The wheel of corruption will be rolled. Yeah. Let's, uh, I got no corruption. That's right. So that's an uh, order rank. We got no corruption. It is an order rank. Yay. Let's uh, fix the, the wheel. And that's right. Out. So what, I will connect our, to the meeting owl and then fix the camera here onto it. What's our current one? Where's that? Do me a favor and flip the uh, flip the uh, light up real quick. Sixty I'm around. About, I'm about to buy my. Uh, uh, stop. One, perfect. Two, thank three, you. Four, That's great. Five. Six. Stop. Five. Five. Perfect. No, you're good. No, no, no. Don't so do anything. You're good. Be... Okay. So I'm gonna turn to the wheel of corruption real quick. Um, I'm controlling it manually. So, um, we're going to roll a wheel of corruption and see what we get tonight. So! Tonight's roll is six! No corruption. <clears throat> Yay! Alright, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate you watching, your patronage. Thanks for checking us out. We'll resume up with episodes 44 and 45 next week on Queen of Members. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya.